Joining me now to discuss how the president is taking control of the legislative agenda following the failed efforts of the Republican leadership in Congress, Ed Rollins served in three presidential administrations, was the chief political advisor to the House Republican leadership, the dean himself, and Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the New York Post, Michael Goodwin, both Fox News contributors, great Americans, and good friends. Good to have you here. Thank you. And this deal, unprecedented. We haven't seen anything like this in almost 20 years. What's going on? Well, the, certainly the Republican votes weren't there for the president, so he basically uh, went with the Democrats uh, after spending 50 years around American politics. Usually when the Democrats are happy and the Republicans are not happy, then the deal usually is to their benefit. We'll see. Uh, what we did is we kicked the can down the road. Uh, we now have uh, three months of debt ceiling. We basically have the first down payment on the uh, the hurricane relief. Uh, right. And it's really a down payment. It's eight, eight billion, and it could be 80 yeah. or 100 billion before it's said. And the critical thing here is that the president is is uh, has to basically, at the end of the day, get what he wants. And I don't see what him getting anything at this point in time. The, my fear is the Democrats are going to come back now and say, okay, let's, let's, uh, you want to negotiate with us, let's negotiate some more. And it may make the Republicans uh, decide that they had better get their own house in order. Well, when you, when you say you're not sure that the president has gotten what he wanted. A three month, three month debt ceiling is not a big deal. It, it may not be a big deal, right. but there have been uh, years in which we would have given anything to get that deal. Uh, and he obviously wasn't going to get it from Speaker Ryan. Uh, so is this not a, a, a clever move on his part? Well, his Treasury Secretary didn't think so. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll come January 1st. Uh, we're not, if the government's not shut down at Christmas time, uh, he'll have a real benefit. And it's one of these things where you have to wait and see what goes, what's the next step. This is the first step. And, it, and, and it's uh, obviously uh, we'll see what Schumer and, and Pelosi are going to do from here on out and what our own side is going to do. Ed does not trust Schumer and Pelosi. I don't at all. I, it's I, just I, stunning I, to me. I have too much experience with them. So <laughs> they like it, I don't like it. I just let's begin with that premise. What do you think, Michael? Well, look, I, I think the, the message to the Republicans is incredibly loud and clear, which is that you guys have had your chance. You've done nothing. You've produced nothing now for, what, eight months. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get things done whether you whether you it's what you want or not and i think this is a this has got to be a wake up call to the republican base uh, to get members of congress online because otherwise yeah. the the idea of a governing republican majority has essentially been neutered because they can't get anything done but the president needs to get things done and, and importantly uh, and i and I, I i can't wait to hear your answer to this Importantly, I think the reason nothing has been done, even though Republicans control the House, the Senate, and the White House, is because of two rhinos. One of them, Paul Ryan, and the other, Mitch McConnell. They represent only K Street, the Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable, and big donors. Well, uh, that's all, they're not representing Republicans or their constituents. If we didn't just have a revolution, and Trump being the revolution, uh, Absolutely. we'd have another big revolution in 218, and many of these members of Congress would get thrown out. I think at this By the point, way, we may still have that we, revolution. We still, I, think, and I'm, yeah. not, I'm not arguing for it or again. I'm just basically trying to be yeah. an analyst at this point in time, which I try and do once in a while. Uh, <laughs> I think at this point in I time... I think you just said, Dobbs, <laughs> shut up. And no, I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't. I just basically said... Uh, I got, you know, when you're off for three weeks, I had the opportunity to talk a lot and give my opinion. It just, <laughs> All right. So I got in bad habits when you're gone. I'm back. Spoiled. I'm back. I'm, spoiled. I'm spoiled. You spoiled me. Listen, I think, Lord, I, I think I have said on this show, we don't have enough Republicans, and we've got to get more Republicans. So the Republicans that are there can't be as pure as they always want to be. And if you're going to be a majority, you've got to basically vote as a majority and vote for what the president wants. Right. That's the end well, and, I, and, I, and to that point, I, I thought it was interesting going to North Dakota today. That seemed to me to be a trip designed only to get Heidi Heitkamp's vote. I mean, she went along with the president. She flew in Air Force One. She's there. He singles her out, the Democratic senator from the state of North sure. Dakota. And so I think this was very much about him now trying to round up votes wherever he can get them for whatever he can get them for. So I think something has changed, I think, in Trump's approach. I, I do think it's more than a warning shot probably to Republicans. Yeah. He intends to do this unless they give him a better offer. There's another element at work here, and that is the death of the rhino. Because, as I said, Rhino and Mc, uh, Rhino, Ryan and McConnell, Rhinos both, uh, and, and the other Rhinos in the Senate and the House, uh, they've been marginalized here. Uh, there is no sense playing the game. The Democrats, if if, if they want to be pretend uh, uh, Republicans, they might as well deal with Democrats. 
And that's what the president obviously has chosen I, I, to do. I think there's no question that, uh, that I would not sleep well if I was uh, Speaker Ryan. It always takes somebody to beat somebody, and there's certainly uh, other people in the Congress who can lead the Congress every bit as effectively as he can. But right today, there's nobody stepped forth to challenge him. That may happen in the near future. I think the next 30, 40 days are very, very critical to this party, to this presidency, and to this country. Right. Yeah, I agree with the timing. I mean, here we are in September now. It's a whole new season, short season. Uh, but uh, your, your point earlier about uh, Ryan coming out against the deal just what, moments uh, before Trump accepts it, I mean, that is a real humiliation moment for Ryan. I mean, I, I agree with that. He shouldn't be sleeping well now. Thank you very much, Michael. Appreciate it, Ed. Thank you Thank very you. much.